Ah, my head hurts. Oh my god, Christina, I'm so stressed. I don't know how I'm going to get through this week. My head has been killing me for days now, to the point where I can't even get out of bed sometimes. Oh no, you should really get that checked out. It doesn't seem normal. I think it would be a good idea to see your family physician. Alright, I'll book an appointment as soon as possible. Hi there, how can I help you? I'm here for my 2 o'clock appointment with Dr. John. Let me check you in. Have a seat and the doctor will be with you shortly. Thank you. Hi, Michelle. Please come in. So, what brings you in today, Michelle? Where do I start? Ever since I started my undergraduate program two years ago, I've been getting these awful headaches and frequent pains in my chest and stomach. Not to mention, I've been getting very agitated lately and having trouble sleeping. I feel no motivation to go to school and get my homework done. Whether or not I'm graduating according to schedule is also a pressing issue in my mind. It definitely seems like you're going through a hard time. I can only imagine how difficult this is for you. A lot of your general symptoms seem to be those of stress. This is a very common and relevant issue among many undergraduate students. Oh really? Thank God, it's not only me. Now that I think of it, my friends have mentioned experiencing similar symptoms as well before, but they've never mentioned anything quite as intense as what I've been feeling. Well, that might be because your friends were describing symptoms of acute stress, whereas what you felt resulted due to chronic stress. Acute stress can result from specific events or situations that involve novelty, unpredictability, or a threat to the ego, and leaves with a poor sense of control. This on-the-spot type of stress can be good for you because the stress hormones released help your mind and body deal with the situation. Example triggers of acute stress include almost getting into a car accident or giving a speech in front of people. You feel your heartbeat in your throat, and you become hyper-aware of everything around you and feel pumped. These are signs that your stress hormones are hard at work. Chronic stress results from the repeated exposure to situations that lead to the release of stress hormones and constant activation of our stress response system. This type of stress can cause wear and tear on your mind and body, leading to the breakdown of bodily systems. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. How exactly does chronic stress affect the body, Dr. John? When someone is undergoing chronic stress, a part of the brain called the hypothalamus activates the stress response system. There's an entire network of structures involved in the system, and in addition to the hypothalamus, glands play a large role as well. Hmm, what are glands? And what role do they play in the stress response system? Glands form a large part of your body's endocrine system, and are essentially organs in your body that secrete chemical substances called hormones. And hormones are chemicals that travel in your blood. Hormones are in charge of carrying out responses in your body, and in the case of stress, the hormones cause our body to experience a fight-or-flight response. Flight or fight response? Hmm, okay. So how does our body respond when this happens? Remember our friend the hypothalamus and how it was involved in a large network? Well, it's actually a part of something called the sympathetic nervous system, which controls the fight or flight response. The endocrine system that we talked about earlier and the sympathetic nervous system intersect at something called the HPA axis. This HPA axis is a system that relies on a series of hormonal signals to keep the sympathetic nervous system active. Think about it this way. The sympathetic nervous system acts as a gas pedal in a car and triggers the fight or flight response, providing the body with the burst of energy so that it can respond to perceived dangers. If the brain continues to perceive something as dangerous, the hypothalamus releases CRH hormone. This hormone travels to the pituitary gland, triggering the release of ACTH hormone. This hormone travels to the adrenal glands, prompting them to release a hormone called cortisol. This interplay of hormones causes our body to stay revved up and on high alert. When the threat passes, cortisol levels fall. At this time, another system in our body, called the parasympathetic nervous system, acts like a car brake that calms the body down after the danger is passed and reduces the stress response. Unlike the sympathetic system, the parasympathetic system helps your body produce a balance. We often refer to this role as the rest and digest system. Wow, who knew all that happens in the body when you undergo stress? So I assume that's a constant activation of the sympathetic nervous system response that causes the edginess, headaches, and chest pain that I've been constantly experiencing? Exactly! And to add on, there are many causes for someone to experience stress. Commonly for students, stress is caused not only by academics, but also social factors. Aging, diagnosis of a new disease, and complications of an existing illness can only increase your stress. Furthermore, arguments with your significant other, relatives, or friends can increase your stress levels as well. Also, Mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety only add to the emotional strain. How about moving away from home to go to university? I remember that the very first year was a tough one for me. You're right. Moving to and starting off college are examples of big life changes that can be stressful. Coping with homesickness along with the pressure to build and maintain new friendships can cause a huge amount of stress. Furthermore, financial trouble is a common source of stress as well. 
For example, paying off credit card debt, rent, or tuition loans can put a huge amount of stress on you. A 2018 systematic review by my colleague, Icaro Ribeiro, concluded that there's a negative association between stress and the quality of life for university students. Stress negatively impacts multiple factors associated with mental and physical health. The sociodemographic age span of university students are where stress-related disorders are more common. Hmm, I see. But why do you think that stress is so common among university students? Stress is at its prime for a university student because the academic period requires their undivided time, effort, and financial resource investment without a guarantee of an adequate return. Furthermore, having to plan ahead for postgraduate endeavors only debilitates students further. Ultimately, the pressure to maintain academic success results in a decrease in the quality of life in the health, physical, psychological, environmental, and social aspects of it. Wow, now that you put it that way, those research findings make so much sense. Are there any long-term severe effects of stress? Some serious implications of stress include cardiovascular disease, such as heart disease, high blood pressure, abnormal heart rhythms, heart attacks, and stroke. There's also mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, and personality disorders. Some other implications include obesity, other eating disorders, menstrual problems, sexual dysfunction, and loss of sexual desire. Wow, who knew stress can have such detrimental effects on the body? Are there any coping strategies or lifestyle changes that I can adopt which can help reduce my stress? My first piece of advice would be to get enough sleep. As humans, we exert so much energy and go through many stressful events during the day that we need time to recharge. Another way to ensure that our body gets the appropriate fuel is through eating healthy meals and exercising regularly. If you're feeling overwhelmed about school, consider making time for a hobby or even relax, and this can be done through meditation activities such as yoga or tai chi. You can also even consider reducing your school workload. Also, social support is good support. Be sure to surround yourself with individuals that you enjoy being with. Do any of these ideas seem feasible to you? Oh my god, yes, it does. To be honest, I find myself constantly overwhelmed. Being so involved in my school spirit team and my other volunteer commitments I have throughout the week. At this point, I'm kind of conflicted because I really want to be an active and well-rounded student, but it's really taking a toll on me. It's not just you. Many students often put so many commitments on their plate and feel overwhelmed. It's important to set limits and sometimes take a step back to say no. Your health and happiness should always be your top priority. Okay, yeah, you're right. I'll remember to prioritize what's important to me and incorporate more self-care breaks in my schedule. Thank you, Dr. John, for the medical advice. I have a better understanding of what stress is now, how destructive it can be on the body, and how prevalent the condition is among university students. My pleasure, Michelle. I hope you'll learn to incorporate this advice into your everyday life and feel less stressed over time.